We are Flake Rose and Spears, and we are supremely black, dropping content that matters. How y'all weekly mental doing this week, fellas? Or daily mental, whichever one you want to touch on. Mentally, man, I'm doing all right, man. Can't complain. In a good space. Uh, everything, let me take these glasses off. Everything, everything going good mentally, man. I'm in a good space. Uh, can't complain at all. Had a very uh, eventful week, I must say. Uh, kids started back at school. Look like they might be coming right back home. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm hoping not, to be honest. I got tired of, you know, trying to work and homeschool. I don't want to go through all that again. So hopefully, you know, we can we can kind of get that together. Then also I was able to uh, be on a sports talk show this week uh, for a couple of times with a person that don't too many black people like. But like I said, I'm one of those people who like to have conversations with other people. And see what they uh see what they mind and see why they think the way they think. So I was on a uh, fearless with Jason Whitlock uh last week. I think he dropped the other episode yesterday. Um so yeah, but that was fun, that was eventful, had a good time, had to be on the t- got a chance to be on the TV set and and do radio and see how all that go behind the scenes. It was fun. We had no problems, man. For people who don't know him, be honest with you, sit down and had a conversation with him. I mean, he got his own thoughts, and one thing he told me for sure, he said, he looked at me for that camera turned on, he said, hey, for real, Jay Flake, if you disagree with anything I got to say, you say that shit. He said, I don't give a damn. Your opinion, your opinion. My opinion, mine. You can cuss me out, whatever it is. Just don't call me a nigga and tell me suck my, suck your dick. But he said, other than that, lights on, let's go. So, that was a great experience, man. So I had a good time on that show. Uh, so hopefully, you know, I'm out here trying to make some moves, get this comedy game uh, up and going and blasted. I did make sure, though, because uh, I know he kind of leaned to the right song. I did make sure they put that Supreme Black podcast under my name when they when they put my little mantra at the, at underneath. I said, yeah. <laughs> when I told when one of the uh, producers, hey, he said, what's the name of your podcast you on? I said, Supreme Black he kind of chuckled a little bit and walked off. I said, he ain't about to put this shit on there, dog. I said, he ain't about to put it. But shit, lo and behold, he put it on there, though. So, man, I, I had a good event for week, man. It's been great, man. Oh, uh, yeah, this is going to oh. be Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I forgot. I know I've been talking a long time, but I got a lot of shit going. I'm, I'm just be Oh, because cause I know y'all be on y'all run shit. So your boy back in the gym. I'm out here, I'm out here getting it in. I done dropped nine pounds in two weeks. Uh, so yeah, man, I'm, I'm back here hustling, back here grinding, trying to get this pandemic weight up off of me. Go ahead, D-Rose. I just had to let y'all know that. <laughs> now you good, man. But yeah, this your boy D-Rose, man. Uh, everything been pretty solid with me this week. Uh, just really just, you know, working my plan, planning my work. Uh, you know, family's good, mental space is great. Uh, I will say this, since I have turned 30, those naps, Daily have just become, <laughs> man, no, it just be like, <laughs> hey, bro, for real, it's been like I'm back in school or something. They tell you, hey, it's nap time. Like, yeah, I got to get cool over there on the little sectional. But yeah, man, outside of that, bro, everything cool. Uh, got some great news in regards to uh, our nonprofit being uh, approved. So a solid week. Um, I really can't complain at all, man. Uh, how's everything going with you, Spears, uh, mentally? Everything been good with me. Uh, so uh, I've been on, a, I guess, a natural high. Uh, you know, life's not perfect and it never will be. But the thing that I've realized uh, within the past couple of days and I guess the week or the weeks past is that even when you know, the negative hit or it come or the the defamation or whatever it is, I, I, it's not affecting me no more. It's like, okay, it is what it is, brush off my shoulder. As I always say, with a lot of stuff, you can't whoop me and I'm gonna live it to make another day. So what's gonna happen? So uh, beyond that, I, I mean, I'm good. As you stated, uh, finally, Finally received a letter from the IRS uh, approving our tax exempt status and and giving us that, and so that's a great relief and a, and a weight 
off of my shoulders because I've been anxious and just ready to get it. So that's a beautiful thing. So uh, that was the last hurdle or the last obstacle that was really like holding us back from completely doing everything that we wanted to do, even though we started doing things and, and uh, partaking in things in our communities and setting things up. But that was the last hurdle. So I am the letter and I read it and, you know, I seen it. It was tears of joy that I shed and I was just, you know, elated and happy. So uh, right now ain't nothing going to stop my joy, stop my happiness or my shine. I, I'm understanding what gratitude is truly. And, you know, to have gratitude or to show gratitude does not mean that you're always in the highest spirits or highest pecking order or peak of where you want to be in life but you're still grateful for what you do have and what you are going through and everything. So gratitude is something that I'm just now starting to really understand and to value. And so outside of that, I've been good. Uh, shout out to you, One Take Flake, for the weight loss, for the journey, for you know taking your health seriously, especially in the times that we're in, but then not only for that is because more importantly, you have kids like I have kids and just to be able to do things still on a physical level with your kids, if they ever tried you and not physically like in a fight or anything, but tried you as like, hey, let's get out here and hoop or let's, you know, do whatever. I could beat you in this or whatever. You could be like, oh, okay, I'll show you, you know, just things like that. And just to be out there, you, you know, and to enjoy your kids uh, still and enjoy their youth while you're while you're getting up in age and they're getting up in age, but still to enjoy some youth with them and to do some things. Uh, that's a beautiful and wonderful thing. Uh, and so that's how my week been. So that's what's been going on. So I guess we could just jump straight into the topics of today. So first, hey, we want to. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Before we get into the topic, though, it seems like. Shout out to uh, to everybody though. It seems like everybody is uh, knocking out things that they actually wanted to accomplish this year, whether they expect it to be quicker or you know a little bit later in the year. I think that's dope though, honestly, because I think you know as we've talked about previously, like we definitely always want to make sure we're pushing each other to be better. Uh, and it definitely seems like since we've been mindful of it, even had the discussion around the mental spaces that we've taken um, at least enough time out of ourselves to kind of celebrate those small wins. Uh, but I also realized some of those growth areas where we still may be growing through. Uh, we got like 136 days left in the year. So uh, share with, with, with us so, and with our consistent listeners, uh, what do you really have planned uh, pretty much the last 136 days of the year? Like what's three things that you want to make sure for a fact uh, that you get done? Anybody? They want to go ahead and speak on that real quick. I thought we was going in the pecking order how we normally go, so I thought Flake was going to go then. Hey, my bad. I thought I got confused on all what he was saying. <laughs> um, in the next 136 days, what I want to come, one I'm going to check off is, uh, as I already in the making, I already said, is uh, to do some comedy in Chicago. So I already got that book set in place and, and rolling. Um, so definitely, that's one thing I want to check off the list. I'm going to do that. Uh, since I did some other things, um, I'm going to try to hit, hit some more cities uh, before the years over with. Might try to hit L.A. one more time uh, before the years over with. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't have a long list of things, because I'll be honest with you. The main thing I had on my list for this year was getting my album recording done. That has been completed. Um, so I guess it is another thing with that because it, it's been completed. However, we got to go out here and talk to these uh, streaming services and get it dropped on that. So I got the one goal of getting it recorded. The next goal is to get it on a streaming service to have people go out there and stream it, stream it, stream it, watch it, watch it, watch it, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it, uh, and, 
and get get some of that money back that came out my my pockets because this show was independent. So <laughs> get my money back that get some of my money back that came out of my pockets with video editing and paying other comedians to be on it. Uh, so yeah, and then also the next thing is get a quarterly my own quarterly show going in Nashville uh, each quarter. So that that's pretty much going to be marked off the checklist also because I'm in the works of getting that done uh, as well. Uh, and just strictly do it for my black comedians uh, and get a quarterly show, just my black comedians, man. And if it's the most success, we'll, we'll bump that up to two shows a quarter and it might end up being a monthly show. I don't know. But we're going to start off with this quarterly show because once again, all this coming out of my pocket um, and we got to do these test rounds first so we can keep moving it up. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a couple of things as far as comedy go. Um, and then the next thing is just keep building my family, keep building my wife, keep building these kids up, um, and just be a success for them, uh, build something up for them. So when I leave, that, that flake name can live on, uh, even though I got three girls and they potentially don't get married and possibly take on somebody else's last name. But it's going to be uh, J-, J Flake brand and blood is like, hey. He set us up so they can set my grandkids up and, and let that keep moving on, keep moving on, keep moving on. So that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. And make sure when you uh actually get that uh what sites that they can stream it off of, uh definitely pub that on here too. I know you're gonna be pushing uh, it in social yeah. media, but yeah, we can tap <laughs> yes, in. I'm, I'm gonna be pumping that everywhere. Yes. I'm even looking up for the cost of cost of billboards, man. So when they do get there, I'm looking at how much it's gonna cost me to, you know put a billboard up for, I don't know, a week or so and, and see how it go. All right, bet. Just holler me behind the scenes. Yep. What about you, Spirit? Oh, uh, for me, my biggest thing is to, to get the, to get played and supremely black known on a, bigger scale and just to get us out there in the communities and for people to be talking about what we're doing, the impact that we have on the communities and the information and the knowledge that we're dropping. So then therefore it becomes a a steadily flow of black empowerment and upliftment throughout our communities and people actually seeing that You know, there are some people who aren't just talking to talk, but doing the work and putting some action behind it. And then uh, on a personal level, it's uh, for the next 136 days on a personal level, it's just not giving a damn, uh, to be honest, not giving a damn about anything that's not mine or isn't a part of the growth and the prosperity of my spirit, my physical or my mental or emotional. So that's that's really it for me. That's dope, that's short and sweet. That's, that's very, very much aligned with the same things. It's making sure that, you know, Supreme Black and Plague is right where it needs to be, uh, really my, my focus to end the year is everything that I've touched and kind of look at from a business sense to make sure that by the end of the year, all of that is pretty much concrete as much as possible. Not perfect, but at least knowing of, you know, what's the direction and what's the vision uh, was the most important part. I like what Flake's point is like, you know, building with the family, creating that legacy. But just really from a personal perspective, I, I definitely am about to take some classes to learn how to swim. Uh, I don't know how, so I, I got to get that out the way on a personal level. Uh, but then also just getting rid of bad habits and just negative thinking uh, and just realizing that um, to get rid of my controlling ways and just sometimes um, allowing things to just naturally flow and just so I can see it through is what it is and not trying to predict the outcome of it. So uh, those are mine, but uh, <clears throat> appreciate you brothers for uh, sharing. So we'll touch bases on that again, but you can go ahead and pop off to the conversation spirit. So, hold on before we start. Hold on before yeah. we start. Yeah. I commend you, D Rose, and learn how to swim. Yeah, appreciate don't it. Let, don't, don't, don't let me catch a video on IG. 
man in used to swim pool knocking kids over because he thought he was about to drown. Don't let me, don't let, don't let me get you. Hey, hey so <laughs> this, this little kid slap little hey, kid in the face. Yeah, so this so this girl was telling me about it. You feel me? So she was like, it was like it was two different people that told me. And they was like, one was a woman, and I was like, I love our black queens. I, I really do. But I'm gonna need a brother to catch me because if I happen to be in there, man, I'm 30 in there. I'm pushing. Hey, look, bro, I got to get up out of here. Like, if you can't catch me, I'm 205 pounds, bro. Nah, I don't need to be around nobody. I feel like couldn't really just hold me and be like, hey, bro, you good, bro? They talking about they swimming in eight feet, 13 feet. No, no. Yeah, man, I'm gonna need somebody. I feel like if we was if we was standing on the ground together, it's gonna be a rumble. We just made the best man win. I don't need no, hey, well, hey, he's heavy. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, everybody, hey, everybody, uh, he's going to be here. <laughs> come here, come here, look. yeah, but no, nah, man, but yeah, man, it's a little, but yeah, I appreciate that, but yeah, that's been one of my biggest fears, bro, but I got to go on and get that out the way, because I got little nieces and nephews, potential could have kids on down the road. I can't be the uncle that don't never want to take them to the water park, because they fall in the water and you know what I'm saying? I can't water, get them up out of there. Water, so. water ain't deep. You gotta learn how to go through the water. Park, but you, 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 you know you, your nieces and nephews, they gonna be wants to be somewhere and just be like, yeah. I can see Ayana now, just uh, oh, no, you <laughs> tell me, you know what I'm saying? It's 10 foot of water over there. Like, I can't just be like, come here, come back, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, my nieces and nephews ain't like everybody else. So nah, I ain't, I, ain't, I gotta learn that. So yeah, that's it though. But yeah, go ahead, Spirit. So uh, for this week, we want to start off talking, sending our condolences to the people in Haiti and in Palestine and uh, just share a little brief uh, moment about our thoughts about what's going on and how we feel and uh, just let the people know that we are concerned, we're praying for them and we're wishing the best. So uh we're going to start with Haiti. Uh, most people should know, if you don't know, a 7.2 or 7.5 magnitude earthquake hit Haiti and it devastated the country, uh, killed thousands of people, left a lot of the, the country in turmoil and devastation and in ruin. And so we just want to send our support, show our love, and let y'all know that Supremely Black is rooting for a recovery, because I know you can't say full recovery when life is lost and thousands of lives are lost and people's homes are gone and things of that magnitude. But we do hope that y'all find the, the healing and the the aid that y'all need. And we are also going to try to do something. I, I don't know if it'll be much or whatever, but uh, anything counts. And so we're going to try to do something for the people of Haiti from a supremely black standpoint and a plague standpoint to send some type of aid, whether it be a couple of dollars, whether it be some water bottles or whatever the, the case may be, we're going to try to do our part to help. So if y'all want to touch on that or anything about that, go ahead. Yeah, man. Uh, shout out to Hayden and all those people. Um, hope everybody can get back on their feet. Uh, the ones that 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 live through it, hope they can quickly get back on their feet. I'm looking at the death toll has reached nearly 2,000 people at this point in time. Uh, just a sad situation. <clears throat> but... I mean, ain't nothing you can do about Mother Nature. You can prepare, you can prepare all you want to, but when Mother Nature hit, Mother Nature hit. Hey, there's nothing you can do about that. Uh, so, man, just peace and blessings and healing energy uh, to the country of Haiti, man. And and it, it ain't. I mean, I saw some of the videos of, you know, when earthquake hit, it's causing floods. People running the streets because they don't know what to do. Man, it's just it's just a sad sight. And then when you see stuff like that, man, you gotta. Just count the blessings that you had. Like I always tell people, you know, they be saying, man, my life is bad. Uh, I'm in a rough spot right now, man. You know, it's okay to kind of walk in that a little bit, but you can't live in it for too long because I guarantee you, whatever bad you're going through, 
it's always somebody going through worse, man. You know what I mean? If you had a bad day at work, I'm sure somebody that hated right now, would, man, would give up anything to be in your place. So, man, just uh, just keep keep hating your prayers. Uh, yeah, I'm all down with doing something for Haiti. We just need to do our research and 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 get it in the in the hands of somebody who's gonna get it to the people. That'd be the only thing about giving any national disaster type situation. Be so many scammers out there and so many companies that's taking up money and saying they're gonna get over there, but don't get in the hands of the right people. Uh, you know, just like when Puerto Rico had their situation, man, they, it was so much money given, but they still feeling the effects from that because all the money to get in the right hands to get taken care of. So, so plenty of prayers. Hey, to you and my thoughts, man, and bless to those who uh, survived, hopefully for uh, some type of quicker recovery to uh, get back on y'all feet, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, peace and blessings over there uh, to our brothers and sisters in Haiti. Uh, yeah, that's that's crazy, man. I, I I know those 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 are strong people we've seen there from history, and it speaks for that itself. Uh, but that's a tough blow, you know. After the assassination, then they have the, the big uh, the earthquake. Uh, from my understanding, and some of the efforts are being impacted as well now due to the storm that's over there as well that's brewing in the area. So uh, it's it's very tough. Like you were saying, Flag, I think you hit it right on the head. Is that you complain about how your day going, but it's all somebody also someone that's always doing worse than you. So you, you kind of can just, you know, go ahead and, you know, take the lump and keep pushing. Uh, but definitely shout out to them. And uh, we'll definitely be trying to look into doing that. Maybe we need to look at some official sites to see exactly who's doing what and getting it over there and uh, make sure that we can do like a complete background check to see if those are, you know, legit people, how we can verify that. But um, I know them GoFundMe's is where they used to been getting over on people at. So I'll be trying to look for the official websites. I'll be looking, we'll look at that later on tonight. But yeah, definitely peace and blessings to the brothers and sisters over there in Haiti. Uh, stay strong and, uh, you know, love. Yeah. And uh, as y'all stated, they're having hard times right now because of mudslides and, uh, rain, water, and everything, and it's saying that that the earthquake affected 1.2 million people, even though, as uh, Flex stated, the death toll is at or getting up to 2,000, and then the injury toll is getting up to uh, 6,900. And with the mudslides happening in the rain, and certain things, it's hard to get in certain areas of the affected. So the numbers probably will be higher by ends meet, especially even if people are living, but they have to stay in them harsh conditions where they don't have no home, they don't have no shelter, they're literally standing in water and mud. And you know, things are only gonna get worse before they get better right now, just because all aid isn't able to get into the all affected area. So, that's something that we gotta keep in mind and just pray about uh, as far as what's going on with them and everything. So as we stated, and as you stated Rose, we gotta figure out what we could do to make sure that we're with a legit organization. If we do team up with an organization or if we just do it on our own, how to get it out there and the best way to get it out there and uh, make sure that that's done. But uh, I do gotta give credit where, where credit is due. The Pentagon put a relief uh, team together to, to help with Haiti. The United Nations have as well, as well as the, uh, give me one second, the European Union. So the United Nations uh, allocated 8 million and the European Union allocated 3.5 million respectively to the aid of Haiti. And like I said, the Pentagon put together a relief unit to, I guess, go out there or, or try to do things. So you got to give credit where credit is what credit is due. And I know there will be other organizations out there trying to uh, give relief and aid to Haiti. So again, y'all are in our prayers, and we hate that it had to happen. But as Flake said, when Mother Nature calls, or when God or your higher power calls, I mean, there's nothing that you could do to resist it. And so. Uh, Hate it has to be this way, but 
as I was talking about gratitude earlier, this this put things in perspective because there's somebody or something that's always maybe a little bit worse than you. You might think you had a short end of the stick, but there's there's millions of sticks out there that are, that are way shorter. So just be grateful for what you have and what you're going through because it all could it could be worse. You could not be here, and so you could have lost your life before you were ready to go or before your family wanted you to go or anything. So just be grateful and appreciate the time that you do have because tomorrow is never promised. So that's what we want to say with that. As far as Palestine goes, um, the Taliban took over the capital. And so there's a lot of Palestinians that are in fear, are in shock are in need of, I guess you could say freedom because their home now isn't really their home because of what the Taliban can do or may do. And so I know people seeing the video circulating where you had airplanes and there was US airplanes flying off and some Palestinians trying to climb on and, and, and uh, some Afghans, I don't even know the correct yeah. term. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, so it was, uh, I, I didn't want to cut you off at all, but I was just gonna be like, yeah. you're, you're meaning, it's, it's Afghanistan that's actually impacted. Yeah, yeah Afghanistan, I'm sorry. Yeah. Afghanistan that's, that's impacted, but what's the correct term to call them, Afghans or Afghanians? I don't just, give me the line on that. They're from, Afghan, really don't know. They're from Afghanistan, and I, I've only heard them uh, as Afghan. I've never heard them yeah. as anything else. Yeah, like they're from so, Afghanistan, yeah. they're Afghan, yeah. So the Taliban took over the capital of Afghanistan, and so they're in fear or whatever. But as I was stating, I know there's been the plane circulating, but the other part of that is there's thousands of people trying to get aid and assistance but the planes that was taken off, they didn't show the pictures of inside them planes where there are Afghans shoulder to shoulder, no space or room field, and then big jumbo jets. And so I know the narrative is this is sad and America is doing whatever, but you can only fit so many people in a quarter and make it to where it's it's suitable and survive, survive, survivable for them to manage and to make do. So, uh, yeah, they said they said the most people that's ever been in one of those planes. So it was it was you know those planes <clears throat> just to give somebody an idea of I don't know the exact number. But yes, they show the picture, shoulder to shoulder, all the way across, full to the brim. I know it's musty in there, but just to give somebody, <laughs> I just had to say, that's how packed it was. <laughs> that's how packed it was. <laughs> you know, you get a bunch of people in a crowded space. All right, I'm bringing comic relief to this. Y'all try to cancel me. I'm just bringing a little bit of comic relief. But you put a whole bunch of people in a close quarter, you know it's going to be stinking in there. But anyway, to give because this is imagine how this is how many people that was in there. This is the same plane that carries about two to three tanks. It carries about two to three tanks. Carries multiple Humvees in it. Like it is, it is a jumbo jet. I don't know the exact name. If I had my military on board with me, he'd tell me the exact name. But it's one of those type type of planes where where like it's barely moving in the sky, but it's really moving, and it carries Humvees, tanks. And they had one of those fields, shoulder to shoulder, you know, full of people. So there's no way they can fit anybody else on those planes. Go ahead, Spears. Uh, I was just going to, I was, just, I'm still laughing at what you said, but I was just going to say that, again, we need to, I stated this a long time ago, we need to know the facts in the news before we just, create a narrative 
without knowing everything. And as Flake said, you know, that was the most people because those jets normally don't carry people unless it's Navy SEALs and they jumping out. And that'd be like a team of 10 to 12 at the most. So the space that they have in those jets still be spacious because them Humvees don't be part nose to nose, end to end. They have gaps and space in between them and everything. So those are basically transport jets to transport, like as Flake said, Humvees, tanks, whatever, things like that, they, they bring over overseas or whatnot. But to have them people, you know, shoulder to shoulder, basically sitting on each other's laps from nose to tail, you just have to remember that there's only so much that anybody can do. And so we're praying for them. We're, uh, we're uplifting them as well. We, we hope things get better for them. And we hope that, you know, I, I, I don't know if, if we need to send troops in there or not, because again, I have a, a kind of borderline foreign policy when it comes to asserting ourselves in other countries that have nothing to do with us. But again, you hate to see any people or person go through what they're going through right now. So it, it's, a, it's a fine line and a touchy situation. What do you feel about it, Rose? Yeah, um, definitely prayers go out to them. I, I think it's, it's it's a lot going on over there within that country. I know since, uh, you know, since the 9-11 uh, situation, <clears throat> there's been a lot uh, that, you know, the United States, you know, citizens and, you know, soldiers actually protected in that area. And, you know, you just kind of think back on 20 years, I think they relied a, a lot upon that. And I don't think that it comes to a point where, people could come in and just kill and just take over the, the country as fast as they did. Uh, but you could almost expect, since that's been a back and forth war prior to United States even coming over there, um, I'm not really big into, like you were saying, like the foreign policy and knowing exactly what was the reason for the pullout. Uh, did they still set them up to where, hey, we'll pull out a certain amount of troops and or Americans to kind of withstand, but it doesn't from, my perspective and just for educational purposes, these aren't facts. It doesn't look to me as that they established an army that could protect themselves from the attack that would come the moment that the US military was no longer present. Uh, and to me, I feel that that failed their people and put them in an even worse situation because we knew it was gonna be continuous war. It's just, it's like that in the Middle East from the things that they've even spoke about from just history itself. And it always repeats itself. But I just hate that there are, you know, innocent people, innocent kids are losing their life um, to what seems to be is what people are saying it as is that um, it could have been handled differently. Now, I don't know if that's from Afghanistan or a country's perspective or was that something that our, our president elect could have done? Like, I, I really I really don't know. We really have to look at that. There's so many things coming out. It's so, it's so Some people are saying, it's on Afghanistan. Some people are saying it's on the United States. Uh, some people, you know, people going on a smear campaign to say uh, JB didn't do his job. They're attacking the, the you know, Afghan government. So it's, it's a lot going on with it. I just hate that, you know, that there's kids is being impacted and innocent families that are being, you know, killed, tortured, kidnapped, raped, and things of that nature. Uh, that's that's very unfortunate. So our prayers, uh, my prayers do definitely go out to, uh, the Afghanistan country and to the people that are being impacted, especially for the people that are just coming in peace and just literally want to just, you know, live life. Uh, that's very unfortunate, but hopefully uh, there is some aid or something that could be uh, put in place to, to hold off the attacks, especially just the way they're doing it. Yeah, prayers, prayers to those guys, man. We Once again, another situation where you think your day is going bad this is another example. I know we complain a lot about what goes in the United States of America and people getting treated bad. Don't get me wrong, it is fucked up, but we never had a situation where uh, a group like the Taliban or the Taliban, whatever they call them, just all up in your house, taking your stuff. 
It was like you was riding for the United States, so we gonna kill your oldest son or rape your daughter or whatever it is uh, they've been doing. They just been over there terrorizing as usual um, ever since they left. Um, actually, the, some of the facts is basically this. 45 got this started. He was pulling troops out uh, when he was in there. Also, facts are we've been training their uh, we've been training their army uh, for quite a while to be prepared for a situation. I guess it's like we're gonna train y'all because one day United States is gonna have to pull out and get up out of here. Uh, you can look at it kind of different, you know, some different ways. Well, I say that America has clean hands on this hell. Nah, we was over there because that oil was over there. Like like Dave Spell said, got that oil, oil, oil. They tried to kill my father. Yeah, we was all over there trying to get oil and everything else. And we did that. <clears throat> the war on Afghanistan started basically with that, back when back when Bush was in the office and we knew what that was all about. Uh, when we stayed over there for a while. Um, now, can I get mad at them for possibly not training them up to the United States standards? In a way, I can't blame us for doing that. The thing is, this is the deal. If you train them up to our standards, then they learn how to defeat us and our secrets. And then, well, I don't think they would be able to because, you know, we got a larger Army, Air Force, Navy than they have. However, you still don't kind of want those secrets to get out. They could damage your military if they decide to say, well, we appreciate y'all. Now we coming back at y'all head for X, Y, Z. So I kind of can't blame them for that. But one thing that the JB said, I kind of feel him was on, all right, we trained y'all up to a certain ability to defend y'all self. These cats showed up, your president or whoever they got in charge, he took off running. He left the country stranded. You had military people that didn't stand there and fight. It's not like they came and just was whooping them, which they might have been whooping them. However, but a lot of them just ran off. So I understand JB when he says, why are we putting our people on the front line and y'all army ain't even trying to stand up to even fight for yourself? Like he's yeah. like, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm so I'm fine. You go ahead. I'm gonna cut you off. Uh so of course it's different outlets saying that you know JB's doing bad on that. I mean, if anything, we can just name all the pretty much all the presidents that 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 um that took place while this has been going on. Some change have could have happened uh during this whole process. Um but yeah it was gonna come a day we was gonna have to pull out eventually to be honest. People got to make their mind up. People were saying I want my son, I want my daughter, I want my people to come home and stop being over there. And then we pull out it's like what are we doing while we putting the troops out? Well hold on America been screaming for the longest that, that you want our men to come on. I remember several presidents saying and claiming they're going to bring, even Barack Obama claiming, we're going to bring some troops home, get them up out of there. And then people cheering that on. And then we actually do, we wrong. Now, it's kind of like situations, damn if you do, damn if you don't. I've always been one of those people that believe United States stick their nose on a lot of people's business for no reason sometimes. And sometimes we got to. Sometimes we got to be the world's police and go over there and help people out. Sometimes we got to know when we should step in and when should we should step out. You know, uh, it might have been bad timing because we still have people from the United States that's still working over there and is left over there. Uh, which it, it, it should have been, with me, honestly, I'm thinking it should have been let's get everybody out at the same time. Now, we done took a lot of troops out, but we still get somebody over there. Hey, 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 y'all. Don't don't forget about me. I'm still I'm still here. How am I gonna get out of here? Well, uh, well, the Taliban spokesperson said that no Americans will be hurt on their soil. They said that they turned a new leaf, but they needed their emancipation. Oh, I'm not. No, no, I'm just. I'm, <laughs> hey, at the end of the day, what I do stand for and what I what I what I can respect is. That is their land, that is their country, and right. the fight for liberation and emancipation is a right that they do have because that's not our country, that's not our land, that's not our home. So I can understand 
especially being a black man in America, the right to be liberated and to emancipate yourself and to be free. Uh, they say it's not the Taliban and the old. So like when Osama bin Laden was running it and everything, they said that they're gonna allow free press and journalists to come and venture and to take part and to, to be constructively Critici criticizing of them if they feel the need to and to report what they see fit without any ramifications or pushbacks. And these are the things that they're saying. So they're saying the right things right now. And America is still trying to pull some people out. They also said that they're going to allow all foreign embassies to stay there without, you know, any trying to overthrow them or get them out and all of that stuff. So that's the things that they're saying, but they also did say that they will be a safe haven for ISIS and Al Qaeda and things like that, because what they are standing on is that Afghanistan is a Muslim country. And so therefore they're gonna protect their people. So like I said, it's a fine line because I respect it, but then again, you never know if, uh, if another 9-11 is gonna happen or not even a 9-11, uh, just another attack period. But that's why I feel like we should shore up America and our home first before we try to impartake and to basically dictate and make people conform to our method of government or ideology. So like I said, I can, I can feel them on wanting to be free, wanting to be emancipated from American or Western civilization, wanting to govern themselves and live according to their laws, their, their, their religion and their safe space. But again, with their track record, it hasn't been good. So hopefully they are standing on what they're saying right now and we, we can, learn to gain some trust or whatever, but uh, they're saying all the right things and they are allow, they're allowing the, I guess if you want to call them refugees, the people who do want to leave, they're allowing them still to exit freely without any ramifications or, or pushback. So, and that was an article I, I had read. So I just wanted to say that to make that clear, but it's still gonna be like you were saying, you can't believe it until you see it, so. Well, I, I definitely agree that America need to get we need to get our stuff together for we and and that's always been my my thought about it even as a as a young adult my you know 18 19 20 years old when I could first vote that was my definitely my thought that and especially when you got family that was over there fighting in those type of wars and it's like man who we over here for? like come on we we got a lot of stuff we need to get straightened out now we're trying to straighten out somebody else's country so I hope they stick to what they're saying I hope they don't go back to doing the women the way they were because uh, before time, you know, before then, women weren't able to drive. Women couldn't leave the house by themselves. They had to be with, you know, somebody of their family, a male in their family or something like that to go out. Um, like you said, they talked a good game and saying they might not go back to that. I hope they stick with that because uh, these women have got some type of level of freedom instead of being, you know, kind of chained up in the house and, and not able to do anything at all. So I, I hope they it. stick with that. I yeah. forgot to say real quick though, they did say that they was going to be supporters of women's rights for their women's rights. So they were standing yeah. on that as well. So that's something that they did say. And I think that that's, that's highly commendable. Uh, but like, I think everything that you kind of can touch is the slippery slope because you have to think is um, a lot of that is just their way of living, just the same way that we do things in America. So it's just kind of like everybody wants to enforce like this, this one way, one era. Everybody's everybody's just not gonna always agree to that. So hopefully we just get to a space to where people can actually agree to disagree on certain things and certain beliefs because even like the terminology of saying like they can't do anything. Some of them are just that's just their upbringing. It doesn't make them feel any way because that's just no different than saying somebody saying in America. Well, she in the house cooking all day and cleaning. That's all she do. There's, it's really no different. Like I've heard, don't get me wrong now, them not having 
their individual rights, that they should have those. But when it comes to like traditionalism, some of the things that they do within their religion or just their upbringing, that's just what it is. Ain't no different from my yeah, great grandmama, you know what I'm saying? Cooking at the house all day and granddaddy yeah. out in, in town and you know what I'm saying? On the road, driving cars or working the railroad. It's just, ain't no difference. Some stuff is just traditional. And I think we got to get away yeah, from that. And, I, and, and I'm cool, and I'm cool with that. Yeah. But, and I'm cool with that. But for a woman to be running the house and she can't even get in her car, get in the car and drive down the street to go get food for the babies. Like that, to me, to me, it's Now that's crazy. extreme, but I'm just saying, like, I know I've heard <laughs> a lot of people just kind of try to push their, Western way of thinking onto other, you know, religions or people that were brought up differently. That's just how they think the same way you look at it. Like they're not taking it any different. They're not saying, "Hey, well, they need to do this." You know, sometimes just let people be who they are, and that's how they move. Yeah. That's a cool with it. Hey. Some cultures are cultures. I mean, yep, you know, exactly. I've, I've been over. I've been over people house that was from Africa and sat down and had dinner, and I was the only man in the house, and I got to be, and we just friends. I'm not boyfriend anybody in that house and it was them and their sisters and I ended up with the biggest piece of chicken in the, my plate first and it was just their culture you know and it's just what it is sometimes but you know certain things are a little extreme I just hope they take away the extremeness that you know a woman can't even leave her house and walk to the corner market and grab something by herself yeah and I think like it's like 15,000 Americans left over there and it's kind of weird for them to be going on this whole piece of what they're going to be doing differently, but you still came over and did exactly what you shouldn't have did the moment United States had pulled out. It's like, you came over and did everything you said you're not going to do. Like, make that make sense because we're still talking about innocent people that have been impacted by Al-Qaeda coming in. Like, They didn't waste, <laughs> they didn't waste no time. No First time. day. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they, your, your uncle gone? Wow, we whooping you now. You can't go get your big cousin. We're going to holler at you, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's exactly what it was. Like, they went straight back to bullying. Well, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Of course. And and I'm going to say they felt like they had a Trump in office. And so when the troops, our troops that supported their Trump in office left, they felt the need or they felt that they had the right and they could do it without the backlash or, you know, actually taking the L and getting their Trump out of office. So they did what they needed to do to instill the values and the morals and the principles that they wanted back in their country that wasn't westernized, that wasn't tainted by America or Europe or other, you know, countries and democracies or whatever the case you may be and they can live the life that they see fit in a new way in a new era from the articles that i read and therefore they're trying to bring a new age taliban government with some of their traditionalisms but then also with a little bit more moderate view and understanding of this is where we messed up but, yeah, but we're not going to allow somebody to be our president or to be our king or uh, Prince Shahi or whatever the case may be, Shire or whatever they call him and all this other stuff, because that is in bed with America or anybody else. Because at the end of the day, we have to be true to ourselves. And that's Afghans and Afghanistan, from my understanding and readings. I get where you could form that that thought process, but my overall thing would be is that innocent people and families and kids that were killed for what if you're trying to bring in a new perspective? That does not make, like, for you to tell me that you want to do something different, you target those specific people. Killing innocent people is not going to make me listen to you any different because I'm still going to, especially if you've already shown from previous instances, this is going to always be your wrath and then you're gonna have this, oh, this is what this is our intentions. But you can't get those live laws. You kill kids, you kill family members that had nothing to do with your issue. If you have an issue with a particular individual or group of people, go at them. That's how I feel as if that you should target, not killing kids and raping random, like, you know, educational purposes, but you shouldn't just be going into forcing yourself upon women or kids and killing people. Cause I mean, 
what do you get out of that? Like, I don't want to really want to hear anything you got to say out of that. Well, from, from my understanding, they didn't do that when they just overthrew. They went after the exact people who, and again, this is all subjective, but they went after the exact people who they felt did them harm and their people harm, which is the country of Afghanistan. They went exactly after them people. And of course, there's always gonna be casualty of war. So they wasn't looking at it as, oh, I'm getting retribution. They looking at it as I'm freeing and liberating and emancipating my people. So then therefore, there's sometimes gonna be some things that you know transpire, some, some lives that shouldn't have been taken that are gonna be taken. And I mean, from that logic, I could get that because I feel like we as black Americans and black people in this country might need to take it there eventually if, if nothing changes for our liberation. And so nothing ever happens without, without war or without death at, at some point in order to get what you truly need. And so, uh, but again, if anybody did rape anybody, then yeah, I, I feel you on that, but I haven't read no stories where I've heard of raping and pillaging this time around. Oh, no, no, no. Like we, we got some homeboys that's in the military and that's, that's exactly what's going on. They came in and they wrecked shop. Like, bro, it was how they're really, how they're, I think how they're putting on the news is very fabricated to be honest with you. Like the stories that we've heard, they came in and did what they've done prior to the United States coming over 20 years ago after 9-11, if not worse, to be honest with you. Like, it's, it's real. Over there. Like, you got to think, you literally have people that are sitting on a moving plane as it's going above in, in air to leave, and they can care less if they fall to their death. You can't tell me you targeted a group of people that I felt I was not at harm and I want to get out of this place that bad. These, these are facts. You feel what I'm saying? Like, this isn't no... Uh, spec no this is this is really what's going on in their country like i don't think that it's getting enough attention or it's getting scaved over and everybody want to talk about jb it's real over there like them people it's it's on over there bro like they are uh, I, I know it's real from a from a from a a fighting sense and a and a in a liberating and emancipation sense, because yeah. anytime you're fighting for your freedom yeah. and for your liberation and emancipating, there's going to be some bloodshed that that has to happen in order to get the ultimate goal and the ultimate desire that you want. However, I just, I just, from, from what I'm saying, and again, these are the things that I'm reading are European, yeah. American, and all this other stuff. And, and even coming from their mouth, because I watched the thing and it was translated from their mouth saying that they're not the same old Taliban. And my point is, or what I'm saying is, why would the whole world be in agreement that it is a new world order for the Taliban now versus not doing what they've been doing all this time and force their their hand on them again. Because if, if we were still in there, we know this wouldn't have transpired, at least not like this at this time as quickly. So I would say that, you know, hope, I'm just giving them hope. I'm just giving them hope. I'm following you on a hope perspective. I'm just, just from what we've been told that I, we know for a fact is, is fact from what's going on over on the ground. Uh, that sounds good. But nah, bro, that, the way they came in, like when they, when they talk about the liberation part, I think that's our fine dandy for wh whoever needs to do it. I think that's the most important part. But when you think about impacting innocent family and lives and forever, yeah, it's, it's a little deeper than that. So it, it, it sounds good and we'll see how it turns out. And, and you know, uh, like, we, like we said at the beginning, peace and uh, blessings and, you know, plenty of prayers to protect those people as they go through that. But uh, from what's, not being reported and what's really going on, it's not too much of a difference. Uh, it's really, they see the opportunity to where they are the big dog again, and they don't have to run into a force that can stop them. And they, they're having their way and doing whatever they want to do in the name of liberation. I, I'll leave it at that.
Uh, and then, I, but this is also this point. I, I won't, I won't, I say it without saying too much. Uh, I don't think that what they're doing is anything that they haven't seen be done over the last two decades. And just let that sink in. That's it. Yeah, I don't think so. And while I was talking, I was able to do a little bit of research. Uh, it was 640 people on that plane. It's a C-17 is the name of the plane. It was 640 people on that plane. They left. And they found body parts. Let me see. And they found body parts. No, because everybody didn't fall out. Um, what did they call They found body parts in the landing gear when that plane landed. So in some of the landing gears, it was body parts found. So um, you got to think about it, man. Because there's no way of surviving. Even, if you, even for the people who got in that landing gear, let's say they didn't get cut up on the way home or whatever. You're going to freeze to death at the bottom of it because there's nothing keeping you warm. So, you know, when you get up in that sky, it gets very cold. And you will freeze to death on a flight that long. Uh, and these people was trying to escape. Um, we just don't know all the details of everything that's going to happen. Uh, we got to see what's going to happen. But uh, people are terrified. Let me just say that. And I just read the Soviets have pulled out some of their people as well out of Afghanistan. So, man, it's it, it like, it don't like it's going to be too good. But, but, you know, like Spirit said, hopefully they can stand on the word. And, um, and they have changed. And, Man, hopefully, hopefully everything will be okay, man. All we can do is pray for it, whatever you believe in, and and hopefully it turn out to be okay. Because I don't, I don't want to see anybody, you know, go through that type of terror. That's all I got on. I just know that. I mean, shit. I'm with the shits to a certain extent. And I, 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 I feel, no, like for real, like. I, oh, how we gonna talk about Afghanistan to you with the shit? <laughs> I, I, I think I know where you're going with it, but I'm gonna no, say that. Because if, if we wanna be real, innocence of life isn't that innocent when you have people who are taking away liberties and freedom or whatever. And so I'm not talking about the Taliban now because the Taliban can be our America's justice system. So, uh, slow down, uh, slow down, thug. I know where you're going, but just, <laughs> you just put it together right here. No, no, I am. I'm saying the Taliban, so let's say the Taliban is the bad guys and they're doing exactly what Rose said. So they can be America's justice system. They could be Americans, po police uh, and, and law enforcement. They could be America's judicial system. They could be the private prisons. They could be capitalism. They could be all of that. So let's say that's what the Taliban is. At that point, everything that I named for America, the judicial system, the private prisons, the prisons, law enforcement, all of that stuff, there's no innocence of life. So if I have to take out yours and your family in order to free my people, to stop my people from being murdered, I'm with the shits. Because at the end of the day, the only way this shit is going to stop is if they see bloodshed too. And they come up against a force that's ready to fight for their independence, their freedom, their liberation, and their emancipation. And so I can understand taking it to a certain level of Hey, I, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. This is for me and my people. This is for the loved ones that I care about that y'all haven't cared about for 400 plus years. So that's why I'm saying like, I'm not talking about raping no kids or no children or nothing like that. Never would I condone that or agree or represent that and say, that's all right. But if one of them little kids gotta go, they gotta go. If Billy Bob Joe gotta go because of they align with uh, Zimmerman, I'm sorry, but I'm not. 
So that's that's why I stand on that. And that's why I can understand when when you have somebody literally come over and take away your civil liberties and your your way of life and enforce something on you and strip you of who you are as a people. Sometimes you got to go to some extreme measures to to get to get your livelihood back. Yeah, I'm I'm following you on that, and I, I I won't connect the two just based off of what what how we look at it or how we may handle things. Just because I don't really know exactly of what's going on and how this really spiraled out of control. Of course, we have my we have uh, information on it now, but I don't know like the real roots of it. Uh, but just comparing the situations and how you're speaking on it is that yeah, I agree with you from a sense that where my, my where my stance on it was is the in, innocent people that were being impacted. So it's, it's just if you have a direct group of people that you feel that you have should be targeting, target them. Because even if I or we were to make a move on something that will be directly impacting individuals, there is not going to be any innocent bystanders that are attacked at any point unless they put themselves in harm's way. These people are being murdered or what however they want to, whatever they're doing is complete takeover in no regards of anybody else. That I can't agree with. Because at the end of the day, there are casualties to every war, but at some instance, you have to be direct and intentional with who you're targeting. And if you're just doing it to everybody, then the, it's an art of war. There's always an art of war. That's just how I look at it. There's an art of war. It's not going to flake knowing I should be targeting spirits. That's just how I look at it. I, I can't I can't agree with that. And I've known people that have moved and did what they did, but when it came to families or people that had nothing to do with it, you were in the wrong if you hit people that had nothing to do with it. Now, if you got who you were supposed to be getting, that's your business, you feel me? But to put everybody in line just for your liberation, knowing that they had no impact because everybody's in this matrix and being controlled by groups of people, that ain't everybody's issue. Unless you're talking about, yeah, that's why I won't I won't compare those two. That's a whole different subject, but that I won't compare those two. Like that's and, way different. And I understand that the art of war, but in the art of war, there's also take out the whole bloodline so they can't come for you later. Take out the whole bloodline yeah, yeah, so they but can't I, come for you later. I'm following you there, but here's the thing though. And maybe that was your stance, but my whole thing was, was the innocent people that were protect, that were impacted. It's not, hey, what do we think? I, I wasn't speaking on what do we think they should do because I don't know and I'm not, actually impacted is more or less of sympathy for the people that were impacted, not how I feel as if they should go about getting their liberation because one, it's not going to impact me. I just have sympathy for the people that were impacted and innocent lives laws or wh whatever other things that may have happened from a traumatic sense. Not, hey, I'm putting together a plan to say, okay, hey, we're about to pull a Nat Turner. I, I can't speak on it from that perspective because it's not me. That's not my people. I couldn't give you nothing from that. So that's not my, I don't, I don't get, that's why I said I can't side with it. I, I don't, I don't get that part because I don't know what y'all moving like that for, because if you were so tough, then I felt as if that when there was a presence, you should have been, we should have been hearing about this the entire time. And you should have went with the same energy when it was somebody else that could actually fought, fought with you. You can't just have a beef now. Oh, this is what's been going on. It should have been going on. It should have been smoked the last 20 years. I, I mean, really it didn't smoke. Smoke no. never stopped. It just wasn't to the magnitude. That, yeah, so now that you get power, you can't come in and say of what you were doing it for because you're not, the, the U.S. did not go even go over there to protect you all from that. The U.S. came over there to protect them, protect the United States from their attack or wherever they said it came from. It was never to protect them. So I feel as if that either it wasn't covered or there was some underlying things that's been going on that I'm just not privy to that I couldn't speak on to say, yeah, they're in the right or they're in the wrong. I can't. I know what supposedly happened on 9-11. That's it. Well, and I know why the United States is over there. But now that they've pulled out and this is going on, I don't know what y'all just for real did doing that for. Not well, the what United going States is it. over there for, for oil. Let's be let's be clear. I, I, I'm, not, I'm following that. I said 
I know what supposedly happened and what they came over there for. It wasn't to protect them at that stance. So my thing is, is still, if it was just like that, I feel as if the only way I could side with it is if I knew from a step of, okay, over the last hundred years, this is what's been going on. I knew what Flake was on. I knew why he went at Spears. I knew what Spears on. I knew why he went at Flake. If I don't know that, then I'm only just knowing of what's been a, what's being covered. Is innocent people are being killed, and it's a takeover again from the Al Qaeda. That's all I know. That's all I'm gonna speak on. I can't speak on how I'm Taliban, saying that. I agree with the liberation. Yeah. Al Qaeda is separate from the Taliban. So Taliban. But they, the, uh, but if you look at the, some of the, the news article, states that Al Qaeda is there as well. No, no, no. Yeah. They're 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 taking Al Qaeda in and ISIS, but it's the Taliban that's taking rule over the government, and then Al Qaeda and ISIS are subgroups that have their own agendas and plots. So Al Qaeda and ISIS is like Proud Boys and Antifa, yeah. and the Taliban is like our our government, the U.S. government. Yeah. So just just to correlate or to make it make yeah, sense. I'm following on that. that that's into. That's why I was following you was like, I will not mesh those two together because I can't follow that because I'm knowing. That's why I said I'm going to say it without saying too much. They've seen something occur over the last few decades. And now that there's a different, there's not the big bully in town or in the country, they are forcing their way the way that they've seen over the last 20 years. And I was, like I said, I would leave it at that. Let that sink in. People can think whatever they want to, but if you know, you know. They seen something that's been put in the blueprint, they're following that blueprint, and this is what's going on. I just don't agree with innocent lives being impacted with the agenda that they're going with. That's it. And, and speaking of look, seeing the blueprint, <laughs> yeah. so we had something that happened in December of last year at our capital. Yep. Now, would that be January? No, oh, it was January. My bad. January. January. 6th. Yeah, January 6th. Now, wouldn't that be about the same as what the Taliban on a smaller level? Wouldn't it be about the same what the Taliban is doing? I, I would dis- it's the same. It's the same level. It's just not our country. That's I, all I, would, I would disagree. I'm saying they made they, an attempt. They made they made an attempt. No, they made an attempt to 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 do a coup, but I would say that is privilege on privilege. It wasn't oppressed or somebody who is, who is getting is the Taliban, forced. Is, is the Taliban oppressed? Because them some of the, the Taliban get a lot of money. No, a no. A whole I, lot of money. I, but what I mean by oppressed is their style of living. So, or, gotcha. or, or their gotcha. traditionalisms because who, who was in control before was taken, was in bed with America, Europe, the Soviet Union. Right. So they was right. taking Western ideology, trying to make a democracy, trying to do all this stuff. And that's not what Afghanistan was built on, stood for, whatever. So therefore they was in bed with us and the other countries. So that's why I say oppressed because now our viewpoints are on their livelihood and their life. Right. And so that's why I would say I would disagree, but it is some kind of similar, but I would disagree because it was privileged people not liking what we the oppressed was doing and trying to do, and then went to go do something because the president provoked them and told them, oh yeah, go go run on the Capitol. Yeah, but those people was fighting to get that person back in office due to a certain way of living he was uh, promoting. Yeah, the president promoted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's I like I said, it's not on that same level, but it's simple. It's to me, if you compare those two, uh, the only difference is they're just on the opposite end of the uh, perspective, and they're the oppressed. If you would happen to use that terminology, right. because right. if you overthrowing something, you don't seem too over, you don't seem too oppressed to me. But Just. but what I'm saying is, for for America, for for what happened on January 6th, they wasn't overthrowing it because they got it from the chief, from the president. Oh, no, they, they, no, so they, they were was, trying to overthrow it because he was on his way out the door. 
No, but but what I'm saying is, but they was taking orders from the head. Like, so it wasn't like they was doing anything to get the head out. They was taking orders from the head to keep the head there. So that's why I say it's different. That's the only reason why I say it's different because they was trying to keep the head there versus yeah. trying to get the head out. Different but similar. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> yeah. at the it's end of the day, but similar. You somebody attack on the government. They, yeah, and they want their way. That's it. That's right. it. That's it. Correct it to your beliefs. Let me say that. And I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other thing. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so. Uh, we're not gonna get on our, our last topic because we uh, we we stayed on this a little a little too long, so we ain't gonna touch on our last topic. But is there any closing uh, remarks or statements that you have for Haiti or Afghanistan uh, before we get to our Black Business Minute and our Supremely Black Person of the Week? Um, prayers go out to the country of you know Haiti. In a country of Afghanistan, I do, uh, you know, uh, place upon you all, you know, peace and uh, blessings and uh, prosperity throughout your situation. Uh, that's all I have. Man, peace, blessings, uh, prosperity to those in Haiti and Afghanistan, man. Hopefully everything get back uh, where it needs to be, get back in order, where everybody can be safe and, and back happy. Uh and uh, real quick, you know, we're going to talk about just FYI, I was going to try to sneak this in earlier. Uh, America, per the census, is only 6% white now. Uh, I'm not celebrating. I'm just putting information out there. That line is shrinking a little bit. That line is shrinking a little bit. So if you see people acting crazy, you're going to see why. It might be the reason why they were trying to overthrow some stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, it, it, it tripped me out because I seen CNN it dropped the other day. I looked at my TV. I was like, I hit back on YouTube. I was like, who is this channel? I said, oh, okay, okay. But yeah, the the, the uh, white race has dropped in the, their percentages. Uh, however, the biracial races have increased. So we see that it's not a lot of... Uh, who was that on uh, Life? Uh, <laughs> we can't get Jackie right. Lee. Yeah, who, yeah who, can't get right. Yeah. Can't get right. Who was the uh, Who was the dude? Uh, daughter. Turn the match with Jang Lee. No, no, no. Yeah, I know that. But who was the uh, the daughter that got pregnant by Can't Get Right? <laughs> I'm the Paul. Yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't think. Of, I can't think of his daughter name. But yeah, it ain't too many of them I going around you. no more. It seems like they mixing that now. So yeah. <laughs> So for our uh, Black Business Minute, we're doing Energy Gardens. You can follow them on IG at Energy Gardens, E-N-E-R-G-Y-G-A-R-D-E-N-S. Uh, Energy Gardens Living Decor is in Deep Ellum, uh, 3116 Commerce Street, Dallas, Texas. It has private shopping Monday through Friday. Open Saturday through Sunday, 11 to 7. And what Energy Gardens does is they try to bring some nature to your life. So they allow you to come in and do uh, plants or they pot the plants for you. So then therefore you could get some, you know, some nature in your living to liven up your household or your garden or whatever you got. And to, uh, you know, provide some therapy because they say, Plants are therapeutic. Uh, again, you can follow them at Energy Gardens on IG. They have, you could get your tickets from Eventbrite. The owner's name is Anthony. And he also, in his shop, he allows other black businesses to come in and to set up shop to sell their products as well. So you could go in there and buy candles from different uh, black owned candle makers, incense and things like that as well. But you could go there and you can uh, get plants uh, potted or you can pot them yourselves. They show you how to do it. And you know, some small like succulents and different things like that, money trees and stuff like that, that you could pot yourself or you can have them potted for you. 
and you could bring it in your house or you could put it in your garden or whatnot just to add some you know therapeutic pleasure to your life so energy gardens is our black business minute for this week salute Salute to Energy Garden. For our Spring Black Person of the Week, uh, we weren't doing this podcast when they was living or else they probably would have been there already, but I went, I seen the movie, and I got to give it to Aretha Franklin, man. If y'all hadn't seen that movie, man, it's a wonderful movie. We'll go out and see it. It also put me in perspective of when we're talking about people's mentals and people reactions like we we joked about the baby and and what he said on stage and what he was going through this that and the other it just put respect that you never know what these people are going through or what they battling when they act when they act the way they act sometimes uh i won't tell the movie just basically that Rita franklin was battling some issues she had from she was younger that follow her in the adult life and uh that's why counseling and stuff like that is important i just having somebody to talk to she kept a lot of stuff bottled up, and I found out some stuff that she was going through, man, that, that I really didn't know about. But uh, she is the queen of soul, one of the best pure vo voices that you will ever hear. Uh, ain't no auto-tune. This before auto-tune and all that. It was just straight up vocal, singing, training. Uh, she has one. She has. Uh, she was given the Medal of Honor in uh, November 9th of 2005. Uh, she has three American Music Awards. She has 18 Grammy Awards. She has three Grammy Special Awards. She has three NAACP Awards. She has one TV Land Award. She has been nominated 32 times for awards. You know her for her songs called Respect. Uh, you know her for the songs uh, A Natural Woman. Uh, you also know for her uh, a gospel album she put out amazing when she sung Amazing Amazing Grace. Um, ain't nothing like the real thing. Uh, so you know she she got a list of hits. If she was still living, a versus catalog would be strong. I'm gonna say that right now. Her and Martin Luther King was good friends, so she knew uh, Mr. King, and she also sung uh, at his funeral as well. Uh, so it's going to go out to Aretha Franklin, the queen of soul. I did not know that she was born in Memphis, Tennessee, but she was born in Memphis, uh, and she died in Detroit, Michigan. So a special shout out to her. Like I said, if you hadn't seen the movie, man, please take the time out to go check that out. The movie is long, but it is a very good movie. Major salute to Miss Aretha Franklin. Salute, salute. So it dropped already. I thought it came out this week or something. It dropped already. Yeah, it dropped. Yeah, it dropped already. When what day it came out? Came out last Friday. Okay, okay, okay. I gotta definitely check that out. Did you watch the the other one uh that they did on like the history channel or whatever? No. Okay, okay. Rita Franklin said she had a movie she wanted to do for her to play, so that's the one I was watching. I ain't want to watch nothing else. <laughs> and Jennifer Hustle played the hell out of that role. I respect it. I respect it. And so did Forrest Whitaker. And so did uh, my boy uh, uh, Wayne. Um, uh, Marlon. 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 Yeah, Marlon. He played the hell out of his role, too. So it's, it's a pretty damn good movie, man. But with that being said, for all our queens out there that's feeling like a natural woman, put your crown on, tip that thing to the side, let them know you are a queen. For all our kings out there, put your crown on, tip that thing to the side, let them know you are a king. We are not three-fifths of anything, but we are supremely black. And we are. Oh. Uh.